Hi everyone, welcome back for another update video on our home energy usage and solar generation. This is for the month of December and it's a pretty poor month for certain. Worst month of generation in the three years we've had solar. But there's some good news. Even though the solar has been really, really bad, and you'll see those stats in a moment, when you look at the annual usage and you look at how much we've saved and how much money we've spent, which is what a lot of people thinking about solar are going to be interested in, how much money is it really going to save you? Then the, the case for having solar and home storage batteries is so evident when you look at those annual numbers. So please, after this video, have a look at the annual numbers that I'll do in a separate video to follow, because it really does show that instead of spending thousands of pounds on energy, I'm spending hundreds and I'm not doing anything that you can't do either. If you've got a roof, if you've got space to put solar panels, have a home storage battery, go electric with an electric car, then you too can save thousands of pounds and it really is that much money. And that's why I like doing these updates because I like showing the real case month by month of how good solar is and how bad it can be. This month of December, yeah, there wasn't a lot of solar benefits, but it is offset, as I said, when you look at the entire year's worth of generation and how we've benefited from it. So I don't mind spending more money this month in December. I don't mind spending more grid usage, even with high energy costs. They don't phase me at all because I don't use very much. So the price could be two or three times what it is, and it still won't affect me massively. But those poor people that are now getting double and treble of what was high bills already, they're now huge bills. So it really is time for lots of people to start thinking about mitigating your costs from energy companies and having your own energy production, micro generation, generating your own electricity and being as independent as you possibly can from these energy companies and price rises. And energy, petrol, diesel, gas, electric, it's only going one way, isn't it? only going up only ever will inflation costs will only ever go up history shows that they're not going to come down and if they do they'll only come down for a short period of time so yeah it really is worth looking at solar panels home storage batteries and electric cars and that's why i do these videos and that's why i'm presenting this month December's update, December's statistics and how bad it was. I've heard from quite a few people across the country here in the uk and it's been quite bad everywhere from what i understand in November, I reported it had been bad on a couple of days, and on one day we had zero generation. Well, that was nothing. December was almost two weeks of nothing. I think over a two-week period, we generated about 10 kilowatt hours, less than one kilowatt hour a day for two weeks. It really was bad. So let's start this video by showing you how bad it was in December. So I've done a little video here of a typical day where we were generating nothing in the morning. Now this, uh, the lighting, it's pretty genuine, I think. This is how dark it was, how light it was, where we were generating nothing from our solar. And it was like this all day for about a two week period with just the odd glimpse of sunshine here and there on days where we managed to get like one kilowatt hour of energy. Other than that, this is how December has been. So configuration wise, what has changed or what's going to change? Let's go through the list. Solar panels. Yes, I am going to be installing some more solar panels. So as soon as I've got the details, I'll update you. But I don't have those details right now. Home storage battery. Yes, I am looking at getting a home storage battery for myself. So far, I've tested three. I've tested Pure Drive, Give Energy, and now this Huawei configuration. And what I've done, I've, I've learned from the usage of those three, and I've learned what I want and what I like to use and how much power and how much capacity I need. And I'm going to build the ultimate system for me. And I look forward to sharing that with you because I can go through the details about what I've selected and why I've selected it. And that's the big thing. With so many different inverters and so many different batteries out there, what do you select and why do you choose them? What are the important things for you? Let me know in the comments as well about which solution you chose and why you chose it. Is it just a money thing or is it the functionality or is it the company? There's all sorts of reasons why you might choose these things. So anyway, home storage battery. Yes, I'm building the ultimate system and that'll come later. What else has been going on? Electric car. You know, I sold my mini electric and I've got a new one on order. I've been told eight weeks to go. So that might even be seven now. Um, so not long to go and I shall be on the road again in an electric car. It has been tough not having one. And that leaves the smart configuration, doesn't it? What else have we been changing? As you know, if you've watched my videos, I've started to install infrared 
uh, panels, glass panels in our bathrooms. One's installed. We've got the electrics installed for that. But the other two, a little bit more complicated with the electric side. So I'm still waiting for our electrics to change. And then I can get the infrared panels into our bathrooms. So at the moment, we are without heat in two of our bathrooms. But the downstairs cloakroom now has heat. What else has changed? Um, voice activation commands for our smart devices, the smart plugs and smart light bulbs. Um, I've found Google to be pretty poor and we've been left in situations quite often where we want to turn a device on or adjust the brightness of lights and we need our phone or tablet to do it and you have to turn it on and lock it and that's the right faff. So if you walk into a dim room and need the lights on, it takes far too long, especially if you haven't got your phone with you, to actually turn the devices up. When you've got these smart light bulbs in installed, there's no easy way of just turning the brightness up without those voice activation commands working for you. So we've bought a couple of Amazon Echo Dot devices, one upstairs, one downstairs. So they're always on. They're effectively like a, a Bluetooth speaker that plays music, but it's also got a microphone and it's listening for instructions all the time and it's Internet connected. So the moment you give a voice command, you haven't got to unlock it, you haven't got to turn it on, then it will uh, issue the instruction across the internet to the apps to control the plugs and the smart bulbs that we've got. So now it's fantastic. We actually have working devices with voice activation that works clearly and easily. I'm quite impressed. These Amazon Echo devices, I think they were £17 each for an Amazon Echo Dot Generation 2. Um, the sound's not bad. The level of voice recognition is really good so even while we're hoovering or doing something like that it can recognize your voice and still control devices so i'm very very impressed with them and it has transformed our usage of the smart devices it's made them even better now having voice commands to turn things on and off i used to use the app all the time to adjust the brightness of um, lights and turn plugs on and off now i can use voice commands and it didn't cost very much to do it either two devices 17 pounds each one upstairs one downstairs a couple of more casa smart plugs i think we're up to about 13 plugs now um, i only thought we'd need a couple of devices so it just shows i'm either addicted to it or they are really working for us that we can have all these devices turning on and off on time schedules and uh, according to whenever we want to ad hoc just using voice controls Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope there was some useful information there for you. December really has been quite poor. But as I said, the next detailed video that I'll do covers the entire year. And that's where it really, really makes sense. The cost savings are phenomenal. So definitely watch that one. OK, let's start with the solar panels. We've got 6.3 kilowatts in total and it's split into two arrays. The bottom 14 panels that you can see there that's the original array that we have, so 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, that's 14 times 280 watts. And we've got that on a 3.68 kilowatt inverter. The top eight panels, those are 300 watt panels, and there are eight of them, so that's 2.4 kilowatts. And they're connected on our solar edge inverter, which is a 2 kilowatt inverter. So, solar generation, 94 kilowatt hours for the month of December. Look how small that bar is at the far right hand side of the graph. It's absolutely tiny, a lot less than half of what we had in November. Not only that, but a lot less than what we've had in any other December. December 2019, we had over 200 kilowatt hours. We're less than half that for this December, December 2021. Incredibly low generation. Mostly that poor generation is just down to weather conditions and how dull and cloudy it's been. But have a look at this. This is our solar edge inverter. We generated 41.5 kilowatt hours. Compare that to our Huawei inverter, which is 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels. And we only generated 52 kilowatt hours for the month. The proportions just aren't right there. The Huawei is not performing very well in low light conditions. And I thought the solar edge was quite poor to start with. Really can't wait to get my Solus inverter back in, which performs really well in low light conditions. Looking at the day by day view here uh, at the bottom with the green bars showing how many kilowatt hours of energy we generated on this Huawei inverter. You can see how many are zero or almost zero. That's a lot of really bad generation days. And there's a whole block there, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, where we had nothing. 
And some good news, export was low. We only exported 7.5 kilowatt hours. Again, far right hand side, really, really small amount. We didn't export very much at all. Import though, that's another story. Have a look at how tall that line is at the end there for December. Uh, nearly 600 kilowatt hours imported from the grid. Huge amount, much more than we'd normally use. But as you know, if you follow my videos, we've started heating the home using electricity. And that's why we're using so much more energy from the grid than we have done in previous months. So those imported kilowatt hours, as you can see here, 562.56 kilowatt hours. That's what we imported according to Octopus Energy. We're on their GO tariff. We averaged 6.75 pence for all of the energy that we consumed during the month. The average was only 6.75 pence. Even though prices are going up, I was very, very lucky to get on one of the last very, very good tariffs. So I'm paying 4.5 pence at cheap rate and uh, 16 pence at expensive rate. Total bill for the month, £45.72. That includes heating the home. Incredibly cheap. So thank you, Octopus Energy, for that incredible tariff. Really is working well for me. Looking at our consumption of energy, if we look at the My Energy app here, it's showing 583.9 kilowatt hours of energy being consumed by the house. That does include battery charging, the home storage battery being charged as well. And that house consumption is pretty low usage, really. It averages at 18.8 .8 kilowatt hours a day. We had a maximum of 27 and a minimum of just 12 kilowatt hours. But 180 kilowatt hours was used to heat our hot water. Most of that was from cheap rate energy charging overnight, heating our hot water overnight. Very little actually came from solar energy. In fact, it was only 12 kilowatt hours of solar energy that we used to heat the hot water. So with our solar energy, if we've got any excess, that goes to charging the battery. And then when the battery is full, then it's hot water. So only 12 spare. And just one charging session on our Zappi device. As you can see there, 7.9 kilowatt hours. Half of that came from solar energy. We actually had a sunny day when my daughter visited in a Kia e Nero. But thank you for watching this video, especially all the way through to the end. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. More videos to come about electric cars, solar panels and home storage batteries. All of those things are changing, aren't they? So there's lots of things to share with you as soon as I've got those details confirmed. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye for now.